Express Extra. We've just heard Gordon Hughes. Here he is, all the way from Dunfermline in Scotland. Gordon, how are you doing? Very well, thanks. Delighted so to be here. Great to have you here. So it is. That was a great um, version of uh, the Eagles' Peaceful Easy Feeling. It's thanks. It's one of those nice opening songs, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of laid back, maybe slightly different to uh, the, the way the Eagles did it, but uh, mm -hmm. it kind of just flows. However, Unlike the, the rest of us, when you started to perform, you, you didn't sing, did you? You were, you were a musician and you were taught to play the piano. Yeah, I actually started playing piano at five, but was probably too young to do it. And, uh, I went back to it when I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. um, did it for a couple of years, and was really more into pop music than classical music. Mm, yeah, so um, the teacher wasn't doing kinda it. kind of fell like out with the music teacher mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. she didn't want to teach me anything uh, that was currently in the pop music charts mm -hmm. at that time that mm -hmm. I wanted to learn. And, uh, so 
So you, you quickly up, found your guitar, didn't you? Yeah, I took up guitar. Um, mm -hmm. was very fortunate when I started setting the school, there was a, an English teacher uh, called Ian Cadell that uh, mm -hmm. was a pretty proficient guitar player, acoustic player, mm -hmm. and he agreed to come up to the house on a Friday afternoon and teach me. Mm -hmm. So you, you quickly learned your skills. Um, how, wh what age were you when you decided that you could, or you found it, your voice? Were, were you always a well, singer? I, I, I was singing anyway um, you from were. quite an early age. Mm -hmm. um, I'd always had a, a, a what say, a reasonable singing voice as, mm -hmm. a, as a child. Well, you uh, sing everything, don't you? Yeah. And uh, your love for country music has that always been installed in you, or, or is it something that you, um, you, you just? When I was at school, I used to run a folk club, uh, and that was a Friday afternoon. Uh, you had sort of 50 or 60 uh, young girls. At school? Uh, at school, oh, right. uh, so it was that great was fun. Very, and very that, that kind of moved from being folk into mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. into pop, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, kind of diversified. And mm -hmm. learned a lot doing that. Um, mm -hmm. By the time I started doing professional gigs, which was age 15, Mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably done about hundreds of shows. The free ones that we do to, yeah. to, to master our experiences yeah. and things. Now, you, you, you joined a band, but that was with your brother David, um, and he was a, 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 the best keyboard player ever. I, rem I remember working with the band at that time, they were called Ritz, I remember. Yeah. And every singer in, the, in Scotland, when we had to go out and work in the old days with, with backing bands, we all wanted it, it to be your band. They were, they were so great. But that didn't last forever. Uh, you had to move on, the death of your brother, etc. Uh, a big blow to you, of course. Uh, it must have been horrendous. But you struggled on and you kept strong and you've been singing uh, continuously um, since then, right to this very day. Tell us about what's, what's been happening in your, in your past or just recently. Yeah, well, when, when David passed away, um, I, I really took the decision that it was, it was impossible to actually reform a, a different version no. of that band just due to his uh, immense talent. Mm. Uh, on keyboards, so uh, I decided to go back out doing solo uh, gigs, which I'd, I'd done from an early age anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to stand and sing in pubs with just a guitar, you know, mm -hmm. when I was quite young. Mm -hmm. So um, put my own backing tracks together as opposed to buying the off-the-shelf karaoke stuff because I have studio access as well. Um, one of the things that David had going back was a, a studio in the house. Uh, oh, so you make all your own, your, all your own tracks? Most of them, yeah, right. most of them. Uh, uh, and do you or they're rejigged from sort of MIDI files that then mm. we built up and then made into audio uh, and then polished off technically. So mm. it keeps it different and also means uh, I can tailor whatever the track is to suit what I'm doing mm -hmm. live. Absolutely, that's great. Listen, that, that is a skill in its own. I've no doubt you have a, a few singers coming up to you and say, could you make me this track, make me this one? Y you're bound to. That does happen, actually, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, tend to try not to get too involved in that because it's no. a time element to do no, it. You're working Friday, Saturday, yeah. and most Sundays. You're a yeah. very, very busy artist. You've, you've just sung that great wee song up there. Everybody knows it. It's uh, a fabulous little number. You're going to sing another one for us. Uh, what's this one called? This is a, a song written by a guy called Clint Black, who's probably lesser known uh, mm. in these shores, uh, but very, very big in, in America. Brilliant guitar player as well. What's uh, the song, Gordon? And it's called Nothing But The Tail Lights. I've never heard of Clint Black. I've never heard of Nothing But The Tail Lights, but I tell you what, it's great to hear new material. I can't wait for you to get up there and let us hear what it's all about. Ladies and gents, welcome back on the stage, Gordon Hughes. I'm 
never said I wonder if the way you will Is only in my head If I even make it back to town When the sun comes up I'm gonna hit every parking spot around Till I find that big up truck Talking in the moonlight Seeing nothing but the tail lights That's a pair of tail lights I may never see again She hit me with the left and right Nothing, nothing but the tail lights That's about as lonely As a highway is ever been Stuck here with my first highway Walking in the 